But first, our top story. Bail not jail is the cover story that's out this week of the latest India Today magazine in stalls tomorrow. It's a story that asks the central question that many have been asking over the years, but which is increasing anxiety now. Why is it that 70%, 70% or nearly 70% of the accused in India are languishing in overcrowded jails, many of them for more than a year in jail without a trial? It's a story that today gets even more relevance on a day when Aryan Khan, son of Bollywood superstar Shah Rukh Khan, finally got bailed in a cruise drug bust case after spending almost three weeks in jail. Aryan will be out probably tomorrow. But what of the thousands of people in this country who languish in jails as under trials? Who will take up their case? First, let's just hear what happened in the Aryan Khan case, what his lawyer said when Aryan was finally given bail today. The court has granted bail to all the petitioners, Aryan Khan, Munmun and Arbaz Khan. The court has heard the case for more than two or three days and the court has granted bail just now. The detailed order will be given tomorrow and hopefully all the three petitioners will come out of jail either tomorrow or on Saturday. Now, Aryan Khan, of course, has got bail in the case. But as I said, in this country, and these are the figures that I hope will, in a way, sting you. Because that's what, really, we want to talk about tonight. Nearly 69% of the under trials in this country are in jail as under trials. 330,487 of the 478,000 600 prisoners in this country are under trials. 36% under trials are in jail for more than a year. More than 5,000 under trials are in jail for more than five years. These are the figures. So on one side, you have Shah Rukh Khan's son, some would say deservedly, getting bail today in a narcotics case. But you have, on the other hand, many of those who simply languish in jail year after year, unable to get any form of justice. What's wrong? Let's find out. Anisha Mathur tells us more. Over 20 days in jail without bail. That for a drug case in which no substance was found on him or consumed. The truth is, Aryan Khan's story is not an exception, but the norm. Being a superstar's son gets him the headlines. But there are thousands like him who are languishing in prisons, waiting for a bail. Look at these figures. 69% of the 4,78,600 prisoners in India are under trial. 36% under trials are confined in jails for more than one year. Over 5,011 under trials spent for more than five years in jail without bail. This when the Supreme Court spelled out its bail doctrine long back in 1977. When a historic judgment in the state of Rajasthan versus Balachand alias Balia case, Justice V. Krishna Ayer said, the basic rule may perhaps be tersely put as bail, not jail. If that is the case, then why does bail look impossible for many in drugs cases, for instance? A person who may not be in possession of a, even a small quantity, by virtue of a term called conspiracy, he is in, he is in jail for last year about almost a month now. So this is a very mm -hmm. unfortunate state of affairs in the entire judicial system. Some legal experts point towards the lacuna in the law. Special laws that deal with terror and drugs make bail a tough proposition. 
from tada it was copied in ndps from ndps it's copied in uapa all other offenses that are there which has been copied where the maximum sentence is 5 years or 7 years or 10 years which are not uh, uh, heinous offenses so as to say and the parliament is going on legislating and going on incorporating this twin condition which obviously results in a large scale uh, denial of bail to a number of persons thereby increasing the population of under trial persons that are there the prosecution too plays the delay tactic often what police or investigating agency do is they file a half cooked charge sheet or uh, complaint and they say that investigation is still in progress under 1738 there is a provision that police after filing of charge sheet or complaint after filing of complaint they can further investigate but there is a total misuse of 1738 another reason is our judicial system is overwhelmed india for example has 21 judges per million population compare that with the us which has 102 and china 147 the ndps the uapa and several other similar special laws which have been created to tackle specific kinds of serious offenses contain within themselves provisions that make it very difficult for anyone to get bail this means that hundreds and thousands of under trials remain in jail with no trial complete and not even charge sheets being filed the situation is a systemic one the laws are strict the prosecuting agencies do not want the accused to lead, flee and the judges are reluctant to interfere particularly in light of the language of the law however the issue is of overcrowding in jails unnecessary arrests and long incarceration with no end in sight and not even a proper investigation being completed this is a debate that the national legal system as well as the judiciary will have to look into in new delhi this is anisha mathur for india today so let's ask the question today the central question that needs to be asked what will it take to fix the criminal justice system of this country that's the big question that we are going to ask tonight i'm going to be joined by several guests miran borwankar is former police commissioner in pune colin gonzalez senior advocate at the supreme court who's taken up several such cases of people under trial neeraj kishan call senior advocate who was also an asg and gopal shankar narayanan senior advocate supreme court i appreciate all of you joining us But before i come to my guest i spoke a short while ago to justice madan lokur he joins me and former judge of the supreme court and i began by asking justice lokur justice lokur if i were to ask you where does one start to fix the criminal justice system where you have lakhs of people who are under trials almost 70% who are under trials for more than one year who do not get a hearing for years on end how do you fix the system well uh, rashdeep Uh, you have to start at the beginning, mm -hmm. right? By the beginning, I mean the registration of uh, the FIR. That by itself is a huge problem. You know, there is a judgment of five judges of the Supreme Court in the case of Lalita Kumari saying that FIRs must be registered, but it's not happening. You know, we keep reading about it, particularly in uh, rape and murder cases. Mm -hmm. Found that happening recently in uh, the Hathras uh, uh, rape. so you have to start at the beginning that's one mm -hmm. second investigations i mean we are again reading in the newspapers on a daily basis about the kind of investigations that have uh, been conducted uh, so far as the delhi riots are concerned every day you know the judges are uh, criticizing the investigating uh, investigating agency the delhi police third arrest why should a person be arrested you know i mean it's not compulsory that everybody has to be arrested and we've had some shocking instances in the recent past where even in bailable offenses people have been arrested and detained all right remand why does the magistrate have to remand every person who is produced before him or her to either police custody or to uh, judicial custody grant of bail i mean <laughs> you can just go on and on right from the beginning up to the end but you know as we've seen justice lokur in the media coverage of the aryan khan case uh who he had the benefit of the country's top lawyers appearing for him 
Uh, there was so much of hype around the case. What of all those people who do not have the kind of benefit that a film star's son will have? Is the primary fault, in your view, in the lower courts, where the tendency is there, I say, that they, uh, the judges get browbeated by the police, by the prosecutors, the person is pushed into jail without granting any bail at any stage for crimes like narcotics? Is it the quality of judges at the lower court where the problem is? Perhaps, perhaps uh, the uh, you know trial judges get you know uh, overwhelmed by the presence of the prosecution and maybe the public prosecutor and so on. But there is no need for them to get uh, overwhelmed or browbeaten, as you say. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at the case, you know, and decide on the merits of the case whether the person deserves to be remanded into custody or not. No. And we have always followed at least until recently, we have always followed the principle of bail, not jail. Well, that, you know, that's precisely it. State of Rajasthan, uh, the uh, court verdict in the 1970s said bail, not jail. But what we found in recent times is that is being reversed. Cases that could would be seen as available, there is a propensity increasingly on the parts of judges and the police to push for custody. I don't know what has changed and why it has changed. I mean, I, I know what has changed, you know, but why has it changed? I, I'm just unable to understand it. And, you know, you have people from one state going, the police from one state going to another state to arrest. Today, I believe in the Delhi High Court, people from uh, the police from UP had come to arrest a couple. Both of them were adults. They were married. They were living together. Mm -hmm. And the Delhi High Court said, what's going on? You know, I mean, a couple is happily married, they're living together and you come to arrest them or their family on the ground that, of, uh, you know, of but, but, you know, where I, I come back, where is the fundamental problem? Does the problem lie with the way policing is done in this country? Does it lie with the state apparatus? As we've seen in the last couple of days, uh, even people who were found cheering for Pakistan in a cricket match are being arrested in this country under UAP and a sedition. Uh, you know, is the problem with the way the state machinery increasingly operates? Or do you believe that it is the judges who are guilty in a way of, uh, of not acting in the way that they should? Both. You see, I, I, I think the, the police or the prosecution is just, you know, crossing, so to speak, the Lakshman Rekha, right? And I think the time has come for the judiciary to make the police accountable. Uh, I mean, enough is enough. You know, just because somebody says something in Bangalore, you arrest that person and bring her to Delhi. What for? No, you're, you're referring you know, justice. Look, you just can't do this. You're referring, Justice Lokul, to the Disha Ravi case where this young woman was charged with sedition. Uh, but, you know, I'm just trying to understand who do we hold responsible at the moment? Who kickstarts judicial reform? Do you believe that the judiciary can actually reform itself? Or is it so trapped in its own uh, cocoon at the moment that it is unable to now reform? I think the time has come for the judiciary to stand up, pull up its socks and do something about it. I mean, <laughs> it, 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 it can't get worse than what it is now. The judiciary you're, has to do it. The judiciary saying, has to do it. They must do it. They you know, must do it. You know, that's a huge thing that you're saying, that you're saying that, you know, it's reached the stage where it can't get worse. So who's going to do it? The Supreme Court, High Court, Sessions Courts? Who's going to reform this country's judiciary? Who's, who, who starts, kickstarts the process? Everybody, everybody, everybody has to uh, reform. I don't know where it starts. I don't know who's going to start it. But the courts, the higher courts, the constitutional courts, the high courts and the Supreme Court have to take the lead. And reform the judiciary, criminal, criminal justice. Let me ask you in conclusion, are you hopeful or do you fear that matters could get still worse, overburdened with cases, jails overcrowded, under trials waiting for cases to be heard for years on end, the length of a case from the time it's initiated till the time it ends only seems to get more elongated? Are you hopeful or do you believe the system is just collapsed? Well, 
<laughs> if if somebody takes the lead, yes, it can be done. But if nobody takes the lead, we are sunk. Just to ask you uh, one last time, who takes that lead? The Chief Justice of the country, can he now call all the judges of the High Court, bring them together and say, look, let's find a solution to end this problem? It's, it's the judiciary that has to do it. You see, they have uh, a conference of uh, Chief Justices mm -hmm. every two years. And I think this should be agenda number one. And only this should be the only agenda in the Chief Justice's conference to reform the criminal justice system in the country. Justice Lokur, uh, thanks very much for joining me and speaking as always straight as an arrow. Thanks very much for giving us a sense of just how serious and grave the problem is. Thank you. It is, it is, it is very, very critical. Very critical. <laughs> Thank you.